June 26, 1899. A 101-gun salute is fired from the Peter and Paul Fortress in St. Petersburg, heralding the birth of Maria Nikolaevna, yet another daughter to Nicholas II, Emperor of Russia, and his German-born wife, Tsarina Alexandra Fyodorovna. The baby's arrival is met with near-universal disappointment. The Pauline laws implemented by her ancestor, Emperor Paul, stipulated that all male relatives come first in the succession, and a male heir was eagerly awaited. Grand Duke Konstantin Konstantinovich, Nicholas's cousin, wrote, And so there's no heir. The whole of Russia will be disappointed by this news. Victoria, Queen of the United Kingdom, Alexandra's grandmother and Maria's great-grandmother wrote, I regret the third girl for the country. I know that an heir would be more welcome than a daughter. Nicholas insisted that he was happy with Maria's birth, and he told Alexandra, I dare complain the least, having such happiness on earth, having a treasure like you, my beloved Alix, and already the three little cherubs. Maria and her younger sister, Anastasia, were known within the family as the little pair. The two girls shared a room, often wore variations of the same dress, and spent much of their time together. Their older sisters, Olga and Tatiana, also shared a room and were known as the big pair. Young Maria enjoyed innocent flirtations with the young soldiers she encountered at the palace and on family holidays. One day the little Grand Duchess Marie was looking out of the window at a regiment of soldiers marching past and exclaimed, Oh, I love these dear soldiers. I should like to kiss them all. Until his own assassination in 1979, her first cousin Louis Mountbatten, first Earl Mountbatten of Burma, kept a photograph of Maria beside his bed in memory of the crush he had upon her. In 1910, Louis met the Romanov sisters. He later reflected that they were lovely and terribly sweet, far more beautiful than their photographs, and he said that I was crackers about Marie and was determined to marry her. She was absolutely lovely. Maria could be stubborn and lazy. Her mother complained in one letter that Maria was grumpy and bellowed at the people who irritated her. Maria's moodiness coincided with her menstrual period, which the Tsarina and her daughters referred to as a visit from Madame Ebeka. Maria had a keen, sweet personality. Grand Duke of Vladimir Alexandrovich of Russia nicknamed her the amiable baby because of her good nature. Her reputation for goodness was such that it was rather surprising when Maria stole some biscuits at tea time. Her governess and the empress thought she should be sent to bed, but the emperor disagreed, saying that he was always afraid of the wings growing. I am glad to see she is only a human child. Maria was very close to her father, and she often tried to escape from the nursery to go to Papa. When Nicholas was ill with typhoid, she covered a miniature portrait of him with kisses every night. Like her younger sister Anastasia, Maria visited wounded soldiers at a private hospital on the grounds of the palace at Sarskoye Selo during World War I. The two teenagers, who were too young to become nurses like their mother and elder sisters, played games of checkers and billiards with the soldiers and attempted to uplift their spirits. For a break during the war, Maria, her sisters and mother, sometimes visited the Tsar and Tsarevich Alexei, at the war headquarters. During these visits, Maria developed an attraction to Nikolai Dmitrievich Demenkov, an officer of the day at the Tsar's headquarters. When the women returned to Tsarskoye Selo, Maria often asked her father to give her regards to Demenkov and sometimes jokingly signed her letters to the Tsar, Mrs. Demenkov. In captivity at Ekaterinaburg, the Romanovs were kept inside a house with whitewashed windows and only allowed to go outside for one hour each day. Even Maria's good nature was pushed to its limits. As she recorded, It is difficult to write anything pleasant. There is little of that here. Yet, Maria Romanov soon found 
she was still able to pursue her favourite pastime in the House of Special Purpose. She began flirting with the teenage guards, one of whom later recalled her as a girl who loved to have fun and quickly became the guard's favourite of the Romanov children. Even Yakov Yurovsky, leader of the secret police who had been sent to guard the family, remembered how Maria's sincere, modest character was very attractive to the men, and she spent most of her time flirting with her jailers. One of the guards, Ivan Skorokhodov, even smuggled in a cake for Maria's 19th birthday. Although, when the pair were later discovered in a compromising position, the guards were replaced with a decidedly less friendly set. In the early hours of July 17, 1918, Yurovsky woke the family and told them to dress and go to the basement. The Bolsheviks had decided to execute the royal family, so Yurovsky read this news aloud to Nicholas, who barely had time to cry, What? before Russia's last Tsar was shot in the chest. The basement rumbled with shots and screams, but when the smoke cleared, the terrified Grand Duchesses were all still alive. Unbeknownst to their captors, they had sewn the royal jewels into their corsets, turning them into a protective armour. One of the executioners repeatedly attempted to stab Maria Romanov in the chest, but the bayonet wouldn't pierce her bodice, so he shot the sobbing girl directly in the head. The final resting place of Russia's last imperial family remained a secret for decades. For years, rumours abounded that at least one of the Grand Duchesses had survived. There were several women who came forward claiming to be Maria Romanov, the remains of Nicholas, Alexandra, and three of their daughters, Anastasia, Olga and Tatiana, were found in 1979, though the bodies were only exhumed in 1991 after the collapse of the Soviet Union, DNA testing carried out at the time confirmed that the remains were authentic. Initial searches of the area in subsequent years failed to turn up a cremation site or the remains of the two missing Romanov children, Alexei and Maria. A state funeral was held in 1998, and two years later the family was canonised by the Russian Orthodox Church. In 2007, bones belonging to Alexis and his sister Maria were finally discovered. DNA testing confirmed their identity the following year, but the church contested the findings and prevented funerals from being held. Maria and Alexei's remains have been kept in the state archives, and to this day have not been reunited with the rest of their family.